This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM, National Bahamas. You're listening to Talking Heads with Naughty. Oh, only on Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. The views and opinions of the hosts and guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the position of the management and staff of Guardian Network. From what dear you may find out, certain people not like me. Everyone cut us back at King now. Big screw me, I do it like Nike. But me not fear no guy now. Talking Heads with Naughty is brought to you by Burger King, the Cancer Treatment Centers of America, the Cleveland Clinic, Fine Threads, First Caribbean Bank, Janae's Uniform Center, John's Department Store, Joker's Wild, KFC, Monty Johnny's, Percy's Island Games, Prince Masters, and Tropical Gyros. Pass me and them girlfriend a link up. Hello. Dark way you did that when they think tough. No food, clean water for drink up. No me and the dog, them a link up. Big truck, 20 inch trim, there's a spin up. Here's how you can become a talking hair, TC. Got it locked and loaded to the Tuesday, August 6th edition of Talking Heads. Your boy, not in your company, right up until 6 p.m. Happy Day. Hope you had a great holiday. Hope you enjoyed your August Monday. And, and, and now, you know, like I tell you, all work and no play makes you a dull person. All play and no work makes you broke. So, yeah, you got to get back to the hustle and bustle, back to the grind. Another day, another dollar. But we're here. Have no fear. You know, I have a great show lined up for you. We will be checking in with Grand Bahama in short order. As you know, it's Tuesday. So we will be going to Grand Bahama Live for the Freeport Report. Each and every Tuesday, great supplement in the Guardian, courtesy of the Grand Bahama News. Be sure to check it out. All things Grand Bahama. And you know how to chime in. Text lines powered by BTC, 422-GR96. That's 422-4796. Phone lines are open here in New Providence, 323-6232-325-4316-325-4259. Toll free in any one of the family islands, 242-300-5720, 242-300-5720. BTC Flow Channel 612, Cable Channel 969. Stream us live, take us wherever you want to go, guardiantalkradio.com. That's guardiantalkradio.com. That's how you get it in, that's how you get it on for fresh news, smart talk, all day, right here. Guardian Radio, 96.9 FM. All right, now with that being said... Check out the headlines. It's time for headliners. Everything that's making headlines in the 242. Brought to you by the Fine Threads. And it is time for your headlines. What's blazing up the pages of the Nassau Guardian News and Views of Madison's 1844. All brought to you, of course, by Fine Threads. New arrivals in stock right now. Both locations, Top of the Hill, Mackey Street, the flagship store, and the Southwest Shopping Plaza location. Both of those are locations available for you Monday through Saturday, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. All you really got to do is check them out online. FineThreads.com. Do all your shopping online, then arrange for pickup at any one of those convenient Fine Thread locations. All right. Now, let's jump on in. My God. I think we all saw it over the weekend, and the headliners jump out. Gardner and Miller Weibo out of the Olympics. Gardner had discomfort in his ankle. As we know, Sean A was injured going in, so I thought her effort was valiant. I understand that, that Stevie was injured, but my God, we found out the reason six hours afterwards. What's really going on? And I'm sure we'll be getting to that at some point. Pike working to support storm readiness at BPL, minister says. Christie in hospital after undergoing heart procedure. Former Prime Minister Perry Christie is recovering in Douglas Hospital after undergoing a corrective heart procedure on Saturday. The Trey Ramming Communications Director in the Office of the Prime Minister said in a statement on Sunday that Christie, 80, was admitted to the hospital on Saturday after experiencing symptoms of an acute heart condition. He added that Christie was convalescing remarkably well after having the correct cardiologist, Dr. Vimal Francis. He is awake, alert, and excellent spirits, Ramming said. Christie's medical team includes Francis, intensivist uh, Dr. Adrian Cargill, and cardiovascular surgeon Dr. Dwayne Sands. Jamaican man wrongfully detained gets $2 million in damages. A Jamaican man who was wrongfully held on remand in prison for nearly 10 years was on Friday awarded $2 million in damages. Matthew Sewell was 18 when he arrived in the Bahamas in June of 2006 to visit his father. 
Days after his arrival, he was arrested for the rape of a minor and spent two years on remand until he was given bail in May 2008. He was arrested again in April 2009 on another rape charge and remained in prison until he got bail in August 2013. Both rape complaints were later dismissed. And that's just some of the headlines blazing up the Guardian, the Nassau Guardian News and Views of Matter since 1844. Grab you a copy today. All right. Let's check the text lines real quick. Naughty, great show as usual. Naughty man get no medal. Question, did you send the Kong to Paris for the athletes? I thought you were sending the text, huh? I sent the collect. Naughty, who does rooms for the athletes? I heard the rooms look like the rooms in, 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 in the deepest part of the hood. In the deepest part of the... Oh, God. Naughty, 10 years in Fox Hill Prison for $2 million. Not worth it, I say. Anyway, just don't go there. You ain't got to go through it. All right, let's take a quick break. Flip side of the break. We'll be checking out the buzz. All brought to you, of course, by John Shoes. We'll be going to Grand Bahama and seeing what buzzing, what's buzzing in Grand Bahama. Sarah Kirkby from the Grand Bahama News. And, of course, Darren Cooper will be chiming in, as they do each and every Tuesday. And we will be live from Grand Bahama on the flip side of the break as the Tuesday, August 6th edition of Talking Heads continues right after this. Cancer Treatment Centers of America is now City of Hope, creating one of the leading cancer care and research networks from coast to coast, providing more of what you need. More locations means more care closer to home. More specialists means more expertise. More research means more breakthroughs. More advancements means more treatment options. And more options means more hope. Learn more .com. Together when everybody out yeah. fried chicken we are free bucket for the crowd share a bucket together everybody go live Ooh. crispy original when we're online bucket together and do the new dance craze hot afc summer bucket deal eight pieces of your favorite fried chicken and four buttery biscuits with options to add family fries a two liter switcher and four pineapple biscuits starting at twenty dollars kfc it's finger licking good refined style with elegant taste then fine threads is your place if you want those slots him or just taking the race then fine thread is your place if you want to look suave and never near everywhere you go like you're supposed to be in a video want to step out and look great then fine threads is your place with fine style with elegant taste then fine threads is your place is your place is your place John Shoes and Accessories is your one-stop shop for all your footwear needs. You will find what you're looking for among the growing collection of classic and trendy styles with new arrivals every week. John's covers the whole family and has great prices, helpful and friendly customer service. Your experience shopping with us will be time well spent. Shop with us online at www.johnshoes.com. John's also now carries small home appliances. So come on into John's located on Rosetta Street in Palmdale and Carmichael Road West. John's, we put fashion at your feet. It's so hot. I think I might melt. Here's the AC remote. Go ahead. It's with power from a renewable energy system and reduce your electricity cost. CIBC Caribbean offers up to 100% financing on residential photovoltaic systems to power your home. Ask your relationship manager or a sales specialist about our renewable energy loans. You may also visit CIBCFCIB.com slash renewable energy loans for more information. Conditions apply. You're listening to Talking Heads with Naughty. Oh, only on Guardian Radio. 96.9 FM. It's time for the buzz. What are you buzzing on? Brought to you by John Shoes. We're back at you on the Tuesday, August 6th edition of Talking Heads. Let's get down to Grand Bahama. You know it is the buzz. All brought to you, of course, by John Shoes. For everything back to school, 
John's, both locations, John's Plaza Car Michael and the flagship store over there on Rosetta. John's got some great back-to-school giveaways going on. You can win some tablets, some laptops, and all that good stuff. So be sure to check out John's, both locations, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday through Saturday. And the John serving you is always a pleasure. All right. Let's get down to uh, Grand Bahama. That's Sarah Kirkby Hello. and Dan Cooper live uh, with us, uh, joining us today, as always. What's going on, guys? Good to have you on this Tuesday again. Hope you had a good holiday. Hope you enjoyed yourself. I did. I did. It was a bit rainy here. What'd you say, Darren? Uh, it, was, it was enjoyable. I had a good holiday. Boy, Darren, me and you got plenty to talk about. Boy, I caught the tail end of your live today earlier. You know, I was dealing with getting off my oldest off to school and going through all the oh. rigmarole with that. And I, I saw you had a live going on, but I'm sure we'll touch on it today. But but good stuff as always, man. Your, your lives are always well uh, followed and, and well watched, man. Good stuff. Thank you, man. Thank you. Um, Sarah, what we got yeah, going on though in, in Grand Bahama? Yeah, what's the good, man? What's the good and, and, and the party out in there? What's the fluffy stuff? Let me tell you the fluffy stuff. But before I do, as a Grand Bahama girl, I would be remiss in not telling you that if you had sent Sands beer with the athletes, there wouldn't have been any. Man, I endorse wow. that. I, I, I endorse Sam that. <laughs> I endorse that. I was told to send, to send the other one, you know what I mean? So I might have something to do with it. I, I was saying Sands. <laughs> you brewed here in the Bahamas. Sorry, Bahamas, the best beer. And they're also advertising with us, so I'm very happy. <laughs> I there can't you go. <laughs> Next thing you know, I'll get Darren's uh, Rotary to advertise with me. It'll be a good week. Intense. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so <laughs> we um, want to talk about the um, Celebration Key. They announced some uh, more information about the property, um, about how it's going to be set up, what kind of um, what you can expect out there. If you're Bahamians can make money off it. Bahamians can feel the impact. Well, they'll be getting the jobs because I think they'll be working in all the restaurants because Good. they're going to have to be Bahamians. That's what they're looking for. So. Good. People are asking, if they ask, there is a whole website for um, Carnival on the Celebration Key where I think you can go and look up for and apply for jobs there. I know currently I was speaking to one of the construction gentlemen who works for Carnival. He said things are going really well. You know, they've got to get ready because they're supposed to have their first visitors, I think, 2025. So it's all hands on deck there. I believe the road's been paved out there. Um, I believe buildings are going up, roofs are going on top. It's it's got to happen. I mean, they're expecting two million visitors there a year. It's huge for Grand Bahama, so it's the uh, the jobs that will be out there, and then there's all the opportunities with the tour getting boosts there. You know, so I was very pleased when we met with them last time. They said they're looking at additional options as well for payments, how that's going to work out there. So you know, it's all a work in progress, but. It's good news for us to have that many people coming, and hopefully we can, you know, get them to visit, and they'll like what they see and come back and do a, you know, a stay and not just a, a cruise. Got to think positive, dude. <laughs> yeah, I, listen, I, 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 I want them to have a great, impactful time when they're there and enjoy it. I think it's a great opportunity. I just want Bahamas yeah. to benefit out of it just as much as the, 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 the tourists will and, and the cruise ships will. 100%. And I really think this is the time when young entrepreneurs in Grand Bahama or those people in NASA that are looking to do stuff should be looking at this opportunity. Um, you know, I think the tour opportunities are huge out there for them. You know, these passengers are not all going to be able to sit on the beach or are they going to want to? And if any of us who a lot of us have been on cruises, we can see what the tours are and what they can do. There's a lot of opportunity out there. Uh, I know I'm encouraging my son to do something. I've been encouraging other friends to look at tours, and I, I know uh, Carnival wants more people doing tours, and the government has been doing some tourism uh, grants and workshops, but there's also stuff with the University of the Bahamas. I think if you're a smart kid, you get on your phone, and instead of going on TikTok for a night, you go out there and look for grants that are available and try and get yourself a viable business. There are opportunities here. I, you know, like I said, again, more power to Grand Bahama getting up and back to where it needs to be. I think this is impactful. I think this will be great. But like I said, let's do it right, and let's see Grand Bahamians succeed in this. I'm excited. It has a lot of potential. Yeah, I, I think so, and I think it's the same thing that will happen at the shipyard where we had a lot of potential there when you bring all these people in and the <laughs> economy starts rolling and everything starts going. But, it, you know, it, it's a gradual thing. It's not not happening overnight for us so everyone's not seeing it straight away but it is coming 
Um, I'll go to the other story so we can get to uh, what Mr. Darren went live about today. Um, we've got the story on the high-powered weapons that were taken off the streets. Some pretty terrifying pictures if you look in the paper today. Of Man, I look like an episode of Narcos right there, boy. <laughs> or, 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 or a snowfall serious? at least, one of them. <laughs> and the jars of all the um, the other stuff that was there and the packages. I was like, well, damn, <laughs> where was that? So it was, it was, um, yeah, it's an interesting story. Barbara's done a really good uh, thing, uh, a story of what happened, so... That was an interesting read. So um, we have My, a, a what new, a variety. You know, I mean, of weapons. Yeah. Of confiscated yeah. drugs and 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 cannabis and bullets. My goodness. Bullets. It's a it's a huge. So, you know, kudos to the police for doing their job. I feel I don't know what Darren feels like, but I feel like there's always been a there's a strong presence. I feel this lady is really putting her hand down, and I feel very good about how safely I feel in Grand Bahama. So knock on wood as I say it. So. Um, Hopefully everything will be fine. <laughs> um, okay, so I want to talk about uh, Friends of North Andros Camp. I had mentioned to them them to you before, Naughty, uh, I think it was two weeks ago, that they were coming. And I cannot tell you how amazing this group was. They came in, they built our kids at the children's home a soccer field, they gave them cleats, they gave them soccer balls, they gave them other equipment to play all sorts of sports. They had enough that they brought in from where they live to donate to Mary uh, Woodside and her husband for their girls' soccer league and also additional supplies for the YMCA, which is phenomenal. I mean, they had just pallets of stuff. Plus, they also gave uh, the home itself their vitamins for our kids for a year, and they gave them a really inspirational, fun camp. And they came on their own dime, spent their own money, and, and looked after our kids. It just blows me away, the generosity of some people in our world. And it's a beautiful story. They are an amazing group. And it all because this lovely lady, Jennifer Cartwright, who went to Andros, uh, fell in love with the Bahamian, and now gives so much back to uh, communities all over the Bahamas and got to know us because of the hurricane. So she's our silver lining. You know, it's amazing. I'm glad to see that they came down and, and, and did all that stuff, man. I mean, that's like, that's really oh, good stuff. Have, yeah, and they're from Ohio, correct? Yep. And they came all that way, paid for their own flights, paid for their own hotel. We did get, luckily, a good deal at Ocean Reef. They gave them um, a nice deal there. Uh, Forbes Travel gave them some travel. Brad's Car Auto Rental helped us. So everybody pitched in to try and help make sure they gave I mean, I mean they were just great. They even had a night where we all went and spoke to them about Dorian and how people survive. Just a good group of people um, that just wanted to learn about the island and give back. And the young girls just fell in love with all the kids at the home. You know, the kids at the home, they just need someone to spend a little bit of, of time with them. You imagine you're 30 kids in a home. You don't get a lot of individual attention. So for them to get this kind of attention for the week is just incredible. So... I can't thank them enough, and I can't phenomenal. Just people who do this kind of thing to me are amazing. I always, you know, appreciate uh, all the uh, foreign support we get and aid and relief yeah. and, 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 and all of that stuff. I, I always yeah. appreciate that. I always wish those people nothing but the best and yeah. God to continue to bless them because they do wonders sometimes that we can't get they done. They do. You know, we could get yeah. done, but we just don't. Yeah. It's just, I mean, to go into another country and do stuff. And Darren, you've got to meet this lady. She is a force of nature, so I will introduce you to her next time she's here which is great um no we had another yeah i'd love you to meet her i have another nice story um pilot international uh debbie archer was given a lifetime achievement award i believe it's only been given out to seven people in the history of wow. uh the pilots international it's pretty amazing for a bahamian female to get that so it's a great story about that and i believe there's actually she was i think she was the first international president that they had for Pilots International, the first behind had done that recently as well. So kudos to these ladies for really making a difference as well and, and uh, being part of this club. And they do things, of course, giving back all the time to their community. And Debbie Arch, everyone knows her, fabulous lady. So it's just couldn't go gone to a nicer lady. That's good stuff. And, it's always good to see of, awards go to people who work hard for it and deserve it. And, and, and yeah. she definitely does. Yeah, I think they're all very proud of her as well, which is lovely. Um, and an event you might remember, 
Uh, this is what everyone used to call the Basra event. That's now called the Bernie Butler. The Bernie Butler Open, open Water, Water Swim. Swim, the 52nd Annual, yeah. correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's back. Um, we're still doing the swim event all day, and then the awards ceremony is at the Grand Bahama Sailing Club. Pardon me. Um, and so we're looking to get it going. We've had amazing donations this year to keep it going. I'm on the committee, so I can talk about this. And all the money raised from this event, um, from the swimming, the swimmers who sign up, from the sponsors who help us go to teach Bahamian kids how to swim. It's quite expensive, but they do get individual lessons for six months so that when they come out of that lesson, they can swim on their own. And so each year um, we're raising more and more, which means we can get more kids learning to swim on their own and being safe in our waters. So I think it's really great. And it's also a great event and a great community event. All right, before we get to Darren, I got a, I got a couple of things uh, off the text Ooh, sorry, I got one more. All right, sorry, go ahead. One more, one more. My apologies. And I just want to call attention. We did have a fire down in Mater Town at Bertha's Blue Dinghy Bar. It was 1 a.m. on Friday. Uh, very sad story. We don't know many details. They were still following it up when um, we got to press, but I just wanted to bring that to the attention. And we'll hopefully have more on that um, in next week's if we can. Um, a lot of, I just want to say thank you to you. And to everybody who tunes in, 242 News, which is part of Grand Bahama News, we hit 10,000 followers last week, which is pretty big for our local paper. And on, man. Congratulations. I know. So, and we're going to combine the name because Grand Bahama News is doing so well. So we're going to be uh, Grand Bahama News, Grand Bahama 242 News. So we're very excited. And thank you very, very much because your support has been phenomenal, Naughty. Thank you, man. No worries, man. I, I just, you know, you know how near and dear Grand Bahama is to me. You know, I yeah. always brag on my and wife, show it. my beautiful, <laughs> lovely wife being from Freeport, my, my in-laws, and I love it. I've always enjoyed Freeport when I've been, and, and I mean that when I say hopefully one day I could, I, I could retire down there and, and, and open up a Jokers down there and do my thing down there. Yeah. I, I mean that. We ready. So I'm, I'm, I'm ready. really rooting for Grand Bahama, and I, I want to see Grand Bahama, you know, taken care of, because at the end of the day, too, a lot of people know, we always like to put this to the back of the conversation, but... When, when things is things, and the bottom line is the bottom line, Grand Bahama is a great contributor. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. All right, let me check a couple of these uh, texts. Naughty, good afternoon. A little FYI for Sarah. Let them know that on the uh, website, they're looking for executive and construction workers only. Nothing on food and beverage online at this time. Okay. And then... Um, <laughs> I'm reading that text, though. I'm reading that. I'm reading that. You're, you're all into <laughs> foolishness today. All right, so let, 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 let good stuff is always there. Darren, what's going on, my brother? Man, you naughty. Great you holding the Boy, together. listen, man, you you had a Cape Crusader for Grand Bahama. Let me tell you, man, and, and obviously I see why you had to uh, do your, your thing today. Grand Bahama uh, Power submits rate plan proposal to the Grand Bahama Port Authority. And, 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 and I'm glancing at this with a rate increase. Rate increase of 3%. What? On the backs of grand behemoths who are suffering, who could barely meet his commitments. And this is this is not this is not yes, this is a press release error that's been sent out by the Grand Bahama Power Company. Yeah. Yeah, we got um, it. Yeah. Basically so, giving us the details of it. And and so um, my live today was to inform the GBPA, which I've done individually to those who I believe sit in a position of power, that we will not accept the rate increase, not at this time, and not until our economy can get some of those projects that are stuck in the pipeline out of that pipeline. And so um, I, I, I really don't understand the heart of GBPC, as if they're not aware of the challenges. They can go in their system and see the way people are struggling to pay their utility, their power bill. I will tell them that a rate increase is just not acceptable. Now, I hope that the regulators... Now, is it a rate increase to... to now, for clarity's right. sake, Darren, is it a rate increase to 6.3% or is it a 3% increase off of the 63 already? Um, Let me pull up Let me pull up the document. I'm pulling but, it up as well. I'm going to um, forward it to you now, Naughty. No, I, I think that we got the same one, if I'm not mistaken, but yeah. I'm just trying to make sure for clarity's sake. And you guys live down there, so... It says GBC is filing requests a consideration of an increase in the base rate of 6.3% for all. 
Wow, well, well, my three percent is, is I. And this is from the press release from the uh, yeah Grand Bahama 6.3. Power six point three yeah, six point three my yeah. God yeah and and this is and, and just just to, just to be clear we already paying um, recovery charge for the storms that we have nothing to do with we already pay, paying an adjusted um, fuel charge that goes up never comes down every month of every three months, um, along with already where persons went from $200 a month regular to now six, seven, eight hundred dollars a month during this time of the year. And they want an increase on top of that. And of course, this application is made to the Grand Bahama Port Authority, who is recognized as the regulators, who will give the approval or they will say yay or nay. We are telling GBP, GBPA and the people of Grand Bahama says no to a rain and rain. Yeah, it's for January. If you don't 1st, get a no, if you don't get a no, yeah. then they will feel the wrath of the Grand Bahamian people. Wow. I mean, that's a, that's a little bump right there. Yeah. Well, especially when we didn't get the um, incentive that everybody else got on the power. When the government gave out that incentive the other day, we didn't get that. Okay, then. We pay so, our taxes. I'm just saying. <laughs> just saying. Wow. That's, a, that's a, something that upsets me. Everybody got that. You know, if you're at certain base, everybody got that, but not people in Grand Bahama because we're on a different power grid. But, um, so obviously, what's the, what's the consensus initially from, from the initial reaction, Darren? Well, Nori, I, I, I've gotten this, uh, this press release from so many Grand Bahamians who are basically saying we're not accepting it. This cannot be real. This has to be something that's old. Um, and, and how insensitive could a company like this be where they don't understand the challenges that the economy is faced or the people is faced with? I do understand that um, in a conversation with one um, of because of the lack of, of customers on the grid will, will cause them to lose in their intake. But I don't want them to make their problems ours. We, I'm a customer, um, bill me for what I use, um, and don't bill me for someone else. And then don't try to price gouge. And we, we talk about inflation, and we look at inflation around the world um, with, with, with more stronger economy. And we look at Grand Bahama going through the inflation that is going through with its struggling economy. And many of us say, oh, you all keep talking about the struggle, but the, 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 the struggle is really in Grand Bahama. You don't have, you don't have to um, figure it out. You come and see. You can feel it. And so when you see businesses are closing their doors because they cannot embrace um, um, high operating costs or laying off uh, high operating um, 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 costs and have to yeah. cut back, doesn't make us feel, feel good at all, at all. All right, I got a couple of texts coming in here now. And, and you can pick it back up. Just let me get these in, Darren, because maybe you could speak on some of these as well. Um, Hey, Naughty. Um, good afternoon. Great show as always. Good afternoon to your guests. What month, what day, and what year is the sale of the hotel going to be announced? Your counts, or by my counts, it should be six weeks because it was three weeks, and then it's been three weeks since the three weeks. So, yeah, six weeks. Also, when will the nation know oh, about the court nothing. versus the government feud? The, go the government and the Port Authority feud? Yeah, what, what's the is latest on that? We just had the latest was just that the PM was in the UK dealing with that and hired a foreign, well, hired a British, um, Queen's, QC, uh, King, King's Casey, Council, sorry, yeah. Casey, Casey now, I believe to handle his side of it. And I'm then ours are using local council here that are also KC's, but they are local. I believe it's still in that, in that, you know, arbitration slash going to court phase which again is not good for business that Darren and I have talked about as well, which doesn't help us. And on the point of the hotel, we haven't received any updates on that or the airport. Um, the last one we saw was the one that was last week we talked about. It was on Zedness, but we have not heard any updates and we're all hoping to hear something on that as well as um, uh, there's been a lot of sip sip around the island about um, the Xanadu possibly being sold to Royal Caribbean Cruise Lines. So there's, you know, rumor on that as well. 
But again, these things coming online does bode well for the fact that more power will be used and that will be more people on the grid again. I was hoping that that would change our, you know, not hurt us. Uh, you know, like Darren had said, you know, we lost a lot of people on the island. So there weren't so many people used. with more with more people coming on the island, including larger and industrial use uh, with Carnival, obviously needing power. They've got power all the way down there from Grand Mama Power. The shipyard will be using more. I would have thought that would have benefited us. And it said in the statement, our last uh, change was in August 2022. So I'm, you know, I'm disappointed like everyone else. I just, we don't need another blow like this, to be honest, especially for me after hearing, you know, we didn't get the government assistance either. Nadia, you know, um, and they're talking about the tax talked about the six weeks of the hotel. And of course, you know, myself and Sarah has been saying how we've not heard anything from the Minister of Grand Bahama, who um, I, I don't know. If the, I don't know if the PLP really understands that they are the government of the Bahamas and not the government of the PLPs. Um, and and while I'm here on, on your show, I received a, a flyer just now um, telling me that Grand Bahama um, and the, PL, the Progressive Liberal Party, Grand Bahama update, mix and mingle immediately following a PLP meeting that's going to be held on Friday the 9th at the Pelican Bay Hotel Resort in, in person or at the meeting of Grand Bahama, the Honorable Jim Moxie, uh, Minister for Grand Bahama, and Member of Parliament of Pine Ridge, and the Honorable Michael Davel, Minister of Health. So they can now come and they could, they could address the PLPs um, on Grand Bahama with an update, I guess, on Grand Bahama, but doesn't see the need to come and talk to the wider Grand Bahamians. Oh, I'm really, I really trying to wonder if they if they realize that they are working for the country and not for the party. Wow, you know, that's a great opportunity for you as Grand Bahamians to go out there and, and really say who the worst minister of Grand Bahama is. Is it the current one or the past one? I mean, you got a good measuring stick, so you should be able and to... And the reality of it is two of them in the same room together and he and that boy. Well, well yeah, I mean, you know. And... <laughs> I, got Sorry, I will not be going to a PLP meeting. Um, I don't think it's safe and it's wise. <laughs> now, if it was, if it was, if it, if it didn't have the PLP symbol and it didn't have the PLP information on it and they weren't all dressed in the PLP colors, if it was just a Grand Bahama update, I would have feel more compelled and com comfortable in going. I am not a PLP and I don't feel comfortable in the room with PLPs. Um, I ain't going. So he makes no sense. I I beat around the bush. I will miss that opportunity to get the update. I will wait for the PLPs to record it, like they always do. All right, I got a couple of texts coming in, and this one is obviously drenched in sarcasm. Darren, relax. Erka is coming to the rescue. Stay <laughs> calm. <laughs> Please come. All right. Uh, well, Naughty, you have to blame the Davis and Cooper administration. They put pressure on the Port Authority for millions plus. The government turned over 60% to a private company. Wow. Naughty, ask Darren, did the, PA, did the people of West Grand Bahama really get sorted out from the by-election? Sorted out with what? Oh, yes. Let me, Naughty, Naughty, I have, because you know I got in trouble the last time. The people of West Grand Bahama and Bimini got a brand new lawnmower. Lawnmower. I was going to remind you about the lawnmower. You aren't going to make that mistake no more. They and, got a lawnmower. And I believe that's one of them riding boys too, not one push. The riding ride boys, it. yeah. One of them riding yeah, boys. Nice. Yeah, riding boys, yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's working because they, they try to cut the field by, by, by the school and they must eat something, but I ain't sure of that. But yeah, the people of West Grand Bahama got their lawnmower or a lawnmower for the, the, the community, the whole community. Nothing else, nothing else. They had a very successful uh, homecoming. Um, so I don't know if you've seen any change, but yeah, ain't that nothing, nothing said. Here's another one for you. What is the thinking of the DPM when he was last over there and went per and went persons from this fellow has lost his headache? They're having quite a bit of PLP meetings and, and missing the opportunity um, to meet with you know, what is so amazing is I remember sitting in a room with the then opposition leader, which was Philip Brave Davis, um, at a PLP business establishment. And in that meeting was 
tons and tons of young Grand Bahamian business owners. I mean, there was standing room, wasn't standing room in that meeting. And the, the hallway and the outside, it was just, it was horrible. And they met with us and made commitments to be the voice for us. Just like how they did that and the people felt compelled to support them, they are missing opportunities to continue to do that in being able to navigate the support of those who supported them in the last election. And so they're having plenty PLP branch. They had them in High Rock in the church a uh, couple of days ago, I mean, in Pelican Point, sorry, um, in the church uh, up there. They've had it. Um, they're having one this coming Friday. Um, and they're just having them. They had Wayne Monroe and someone else at the Eight Mile Rock High School gym. And the thing about it is, they're not calling it community meeting. They're, they're tagging it with the PLP symbol. And, and, and again, which means it's only for PLP. It's not for Grand Bahamians. If it is, then say to me that we are having a community meeting. I would, I would be fine to say, okay, the Minister for Grand Baham is calling a community update meeting. But for you to put the PLP symbol, and everybody got the PLP yellow, black, and, 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 and color, and all that things, you're telling me what the meeting is all about. And that means it's not a meeting for the public. It's a private meeting. That sounds like a meet and greet, like more of a social than anything, but let's get to the phone lines. Let's get this call in. Talking heads. Talking heads. Hey, what's that, Naughty? Hey, what's going on, bro? Hey, Darren, I need you to look in a situation in East Grand Mama, the clinic in High Rock, man. I was up there the other day, and the nurse and the doctor was taking out the garbage. So I asked the doctor, I said, Doc, why are you taking out the garbage and then you tending the people? Said they have a nurse that comes from Freeport once a week to clean the hospital, to clean the clinic in High Rock. Oh. Yeah, who makes some inquiries? Yeah, look into that part. Because you, I mean, that, that, that that's a clinic. You, know, you got to nice, come down once a week. I mean, that even look into that, please. And the surprise, they will tell you when they reach it. Oh, because of transportation, the doctor need in West End still have a, a, a government car, a clinic car, to be able to go out in the case of an emergency when they're waiting on the ambulance to come to the to the community to tend to uh, emergency patients. Uh, he, he makes, or the doctor makes the concern, the, the, the cry, said, can't come because they don't have the car to come out in. Um, when lives could be saved, while to be on the ambulance. Say what, Dan? They don't have the cars to come out in? Did I hear yeah, you correctly? The car ain't working. Oh, Lord. Let's get back to the phone lines. Talking heads. Hey. Talking heads. Hey, Naughty. Good afternoon. Good afternoon to you and Darren and Sarah. Hey, listen. You know, I heard the DPM mentioning all the islands about the airport, but I didn't hear anything mentioned for Grand Bahama. Is Grand Bahama still getting the airport? And um, final for me, for me, who is the shadow minister for aviation and whatnot? And find out if, if we are getting this $45 million from the um, FTAA. You mean the flyover fears? Yeah. Because we, we, we were supposed to get $45 million a year. I thought we were supposed to get more than $45 million. Why weren't we supposed to get some back, back pay, too? Whatever it is. Finally, if we're getting that money, because that money was supposed well, to be... Well, maybe we need to find out who the got the contract day. to manage that flyover airspace. Let's see find, who got the contract for that. Maybe we need to connect the dots money, there. If we're getting that money... I believe I got an idea, too. And see if that money is not going in that black hole and getting mixed up like Kong Sal, because that is the money. Because he said that we're going to need $300 million to fund these airports, right? It's $45 million a year. You, you, could take out, you could take out a loan for $500 million and pay $25 million a year and take, and take this burden off the Bahamian people. Okay? So somebody look into that for me, please. I will, man. Thanks, man. And I'm glad to know Bahamians in general keep an eye out on that, too. Don't let that fly over your head. Let me get a couple of these other texts in before we got to wrap. Um, 
Good afternoon, Naughty. I know that the Grand Bahama uh, Port Authority is being taken to court by the government. Um, Sarah said it's not good for business, but isn't Grand Bahama Port Authority not following the Hawks Bill uh, Hill Agreement and owing $300 million over five years also bad for business? No, because they don't owe that money. I think if you understood, sorry, not trying to be rude, the Hawks Bill Creek Agreement, our taxes all go to the government. Um, the only difference is, and you have to go back and look at it, is that if we don't pay the salaries or the fees of the people that work in the on the island at the time that collect the money for the government so never ever had to pay before and if you look at the millions that we probably give back to the government that don't come here we don't think or and there has been no statement i darren asked for it most people have all asked for it we aren't getting we don't know how much the government gets because it's immigration customs all that money doesn't go to the Port Authority. All that money goes to the government. And so that is collected for them and then goes, not collected for them, collected by their own revenue and goes back to the government. The government doesn't pay to keep the Grand Bahama the way it looks and the way it operates. It's run as a quasi-government in its own little section. So, you know, it's it, it looks after Freeport proper and the roads and everything like that, you know, and we pay our license fees to the Port Authority for that. But they've never, ever had to pay this money because we've never been shortfalled. We've never owed money because they've done certain things within the Hawksville Creek Agreement that um, that covered everything, uh, building the hospital, building the schools, the gymnasiums were extra. Am I missing anything, Darren, in my explanation here? No. Okay. <laughs> so... Yeah, so it's, and we have, and when they put that statement out, I believe, Darren, we, it was through a, um, an accounting firm, but they gave no accounting of actually what Grand Bahama gave. It is estimated, I think, I can't remember because we, this has been a while ago where we were talking about it. Wasn't it like we give $350 million a year? It might have dipped during COVID time, but that was. Now. We still got down, or did we, did we drop down? Yeah, I'm here. All right. I can't remember. Do you remember how much it was that we gave to the Treasury that no, they had I estimated? No, I, don't, I don't have the, the figure. Yeah. Enough. There was an estimate that was given. It was done in a Tribune newspaper report, and um, it was just an estimate at that time. But the government says that they owe money, but they haven't shown where there was any shortfall or how much revenue was actually collected in Grand Bahama. You remember we also have really high... Um, fees for um, immigration because, of course, the shipyard has quite a few uh, foreign people that come in as well as the oil refineries. So you've got all of those um, permits and stuff coming in, and that all adds to the money that we uh, give to the government. So what we're saying is that, no, we give enough. And that's what the Port, port Authority is saying. No, there's enough business here that you're collecting enough revenue. They're meeting what the Hawksville Creek agreement outlined. And if you want to find the Hawksville Creek Agreement, it is online. It is also on the Port Authority site online. And we're not saying, and I should reiterate this, Darren and I have never said that everything the Port Authority does is perfect with the way things are run and stuff like that. We're not saying it's perfect, but we are saying the way that things are run, the way our streets are, that our streets look, how we're a clean city. Uh, there's certain benefits, our license fees, how we, everything gets processed is very good. And we you look at West End and East End, and it scares people about what would happen should the government take over Freeport. Well, as you can hear in the background, my producer's giving me the cue. We got to get to the break, but I want to thank you. Great stuff as always, guys. Thanks for chiming in. Uh, keep up the good work down with the lives and, and, and the consistent updates. Sarah, excellent stuff with the Grand Bahama News. Keep that up as well. We'll see you next Tuesday, man. Have a great week in Freeport. And I'm sure we'll have plenty to discuss next Tuesday when you guys chime in. Thank Bye you. Guys. Stay safe. All right, man. Be safe. Quick break. Flip side of the break. Cuban Willie will be hitting you up with his numerology report. I'll brought you across the island game. We'll be getting straight to the news. So keep it right where you got it. The Tuesday, August 6th edition of Talking Heads continues right after this.
when everybody out yeah. Fried chicken we are free, bucket for the crow Share a bucket together, everybody go live Ooh. Crispy original when we're online Bucket together and do the new dance craze yeah. Hot AFC Summer Bucket Deal Eight pieces of your favorite fried chicken And four buttery biscuits with options to add family fries A two liter switcher And four pineapple biscuits Starting at $20 KFC, it's finger licking good For fast, reliable and impactful printing services Look no further. Let Printmasters bring your masterpiece to life. We stand by our quality products that is second to none. Our affordable pricing and friendly, efficient staff makes Printmasters the ultimate choice for all your printing needs. We can deliver any type of printing services, from banners to booklets to business cards. You name it, we can print it. Let Printmasters bring your masterpiece to life. Located in the Nassau Guardian Building, telephone 302-2361. We're going to give you a check every week for a year. Percy Fenton Khan, Island Game, keep you winning. Percy Fenton Khan, Dream Big, we will help you live it. Percy Fenton Khan, Island Game, we got you. Percy Fenton Khan, from the friends you can trust. If winning is a must, go play the game you know, cause your best chance is with us. The most trustworthy name is Percy's Island Game, so put 20 on your account and ride this easy train at Percy's Island Game. The Grand Bahama News is available every Tuesday in the Nassau Guardian. You can buy your local paper at Freeport Convenience Stores, Western Bakery, DeGregory's Fine Foods, and Bellevue Gifts. Now is the time to reach your Grand Bahama market with affordable packages, including print and digital. Call GB News Sales Representative Kavandre at 822-67 or message him on WhatsApp for ad rates. Classified ads are now available every Tuesday as well. Keep up with everything Grand Bahamian every Tuesday in the Nassau Guardian. Splash into summer with CIBC Caribbean. Experience a summer wave like never before when you spend with your CIBC Caribbean Visa credit card. Lucky winners will receive prizes including a private boat charter, hotel day passes, staycations, dinners, and more. Each time you spend $200 or more, you'll automatically be entered for your chance to win. Apply today for your CIBC Caribbean Visa credit card. Terms and conditions apply. Visit www.cibcfcib.com slash splash into summer B-A-H. Promotion ends September. September 7th, 2024. Feeling lucky? Here's Cuban Willie's numerology report. Brought to you by the Island Game. Buenos dias! It's Tuesday, and it's me, Cuban Willie, with your numerology report. Brought to you, of course, by the Island Game. And the lucky four balls, the lucky cuatro pelotas today, is really easy. It's the 4753, 4753. Play it and win in the Island Games. Stay winning, my friends. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM, Nassau, Bahamas. You're listening to Talking Heads with Naughty. Only on Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Talking Heads with Nazi is brought to you by Burger King, the Cancer Treatment Centers of America, Reds, First Care b and Bank, Janae's Uniform Center, John's Department Store, Jokers Wild, KFC, Naughty Johnny's, Percy's Island Games, Prince Masters, and Tropical Gyros. You've got it logged and loaded to the Tuesday, August 6th edition of Talking Heads. Your boy Naughty and your company right up until 6 p.m. And, of course, you know, Pearly will be zooming in uh, in short order. So, Mr. Producer, keep an eye out for Pearly. He should be zooming in shortly. But uh, while I wait on Pearly, let me get into uh, today in sports history. All brought to you, of course, by Naughty Johnny's. And don't forget, every Wednesday, every Friday, happy hour at Naughty Johnny's, 5 to 7 p.m. All right? Well, worth the trip out there to the Old Ford Shopping Plaza. Great highball specials, great food specials. Definitely worth uh, checking them out each and every Wednesday and Friday from 5 to 7. Unwind out there at Naughty Johnny's after a hard day at work. All work, no play. You know the theory. All right, on this day, August 6th, here's what happened in sports history. 1879, the first Australian rules football game to be played at night took place in the Melbourne Cricket Grounds. The game was to promote the introduction of electricity to the city of Melbourne. 1890, Cy Young achieved his first Major League victory. He would accumulate 511 in his career. 1926, Gertrude Ederly became the first American woman to swim the English Channel. She was 19 years old at the time. The swim took her 14 and a half hours. 1949, 
Chicago White Sox player Loop Appling played in the 2154th game of his 19 19-year major league career. Also interesting uh, note at the age of 90 in a in a in an old-timers game. Old-timers All-Star game, had a home run, had a shot, 400 and some foot shot. 1952, Satchel Page, age 46 at the time, or believed to be 46 at the time, became the oldest pitcher to complete a Major League Baseball game. 1969, the first fair ball to be hit completely out of Dodger Stadium occurred. Willie Pop Stargell of the Pittsburgh Pirates hit the ball 506 feet from home plate, completely out of Dodger Stadium. 1981, Lee Trevino was disqualified from the PGA Championship in in Duluth, Georgia, when he had his uh, scorecard signed by Tom Weisskopf instead of himself. Sports quote of the day, confidence is a very fragile thing. And Joe Montana, so is your back, Joe, when Lawrence Taylor and Leonard Marshall hit you. <laughs> Sounds like I got pearly. I smell air fryer. What's going on, Perlissimo? Right here, man. Right here, my brother. Cruising along the boulevard, you know. Pop Stargell hit that 506 foot home run out of Dodger Stadium out of Chavez Ravine. I just, I, I, I know you heard it. Yeah, I heard it. I know it. That what was year good, was that again? That, ooh, wow. That would have had to been, I got to go back now. Let's close the, 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 really? the window. But I got you right here. 19, uh, 1969. Okay. That was 69. I, fan, yeah. I was two years before I became a Dodger fan. Okay, that means. Who were you pulling for before then? I was only seven years old. I actually had to like the Mets then because I, you know, I used to go to New York every. Oh, you mean? Summer. Or did you like Mets because of Tommy Ag, Ron Spoboda, and the next one in the outfield making all them catches? No, 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 no. I just because I went to New York. I used to go to New York. My mom used to go to New York every other summer and spend the summer with my aunt in Harlem, and then in that you had Rockland County. So I just liked the Mets because I went to New York, and then when I realized what baseball is about, I fell in love with the Dodgers. That's where you went wrong. If you want, see, that's where you went. You went wrong. If you want to know what baseball is about, it's twenty-seven championships. It is the dynasty known as the New York Yankees. Uh, what have you done for me lately? Whether you dated Holly Berry in kindergarten, eighth grade, high school, college, or fifteen minutes ago, guess what you just did? You dated Holly Berry, baby. No, 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 because what I have, what, what I have done with Holly Berry in high school, college, and fifteen minutes ago, I would not have done in kindergarten or preschool. No, but so you would have known you would have known you had a trophy on your hands, though. Oh no, no, no. See, that was only pulling here and running back then. That wasn't uh, that didn't count. You reaching on that one, but anyway, you need to go pull your, you need to pull your girl Angel Reese off social media, boy. Well, what's all these pictures I see in on and off the court? Angel Reese is smoking. What's going on, Pearly? What you mean, Mika? She track, bro. Bikini endorsement. Yeah. She's got a she's got a nice shape. She's she's really shapely. She's got a nice board. She's got Louis Vuitton. She's got Coach. She's got um. She's got a bit. She just got a bikini content. She she's doing very well for herself. Well, I'm I'm so, glad you I'm, 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 I'm glad you, you no big money. I'm they glad money off endorsements. I'm glad you spoke on it because my allowed celebrity celebrity crush I already spoke about a minute ago when I made the Holly Berry reference. So there you go. I wanted you to speak about no, your ass. I, 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 I don't want you to think I, I don't. Ali, uh, <laughs> yeah, I know. Come on, from 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 the time I saw in the James Bond movie, I was like, oh my goodness. Man, I'm from Last Boy Scout, bro. If you if you're a real Holly fan, you've been there from Last Boy Scout. All right. I I just tell you, I've been a man here. Man. I wasn't being a fan. I was being a man. Okay, fair enough. All right. I mean, you know, she was she was she was Catwoman too, was she? Oh yes, indeed. She's the best Catwoman ever. Yeah. Oh Lord, I'm a, yeah, yeah. I'll be, I'll be on radio. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, man. I mean, but but like I said, your girl Angel looked like she off and, and running though. Looked like she's gonna make a lot of money when the WNBA yeah, is not she in season. Up. She she brings everything to the table that they w- need for the WNBA. She's a fe- she's feminine, she's um, uh, she's pretty, she's talented. She she's got all what they need and what they need as a face of the WNBA. You know. Listen, remind me to send you the Saturday Night Live clip, okay? I'm not even gonna touch it on the radio, but I'm gonna send it to you. Okay. <laughs> and you know it's it's it, it's it's a little polka dot girl, Caitlin Clark. All right. All right. Oh yes, I, I love. But I, I, I am gonna touch it on the radio. I am gonna go there. I can leave it. Yes, Saturday Night Live shouldn't be in Dubai. But Saturday oh, Night Live. but it was, it was proper though. It was proper. Okay. Let's let's get to the phone lines real quick. Talking heads. 
pleasure. Good evening. What's going on, Sparky? Well, with all this noise going on here on Boyne Road, going south, going south towards Prince Charles, um, just past Boyne King. Um, first of all, let me say thank you very much, um, Naughty, uh -huh. for the uh, refreshments and the Mai Mai dinner and the uh, Dunkin' Donuts donuts and the uh, iced coffee. So you enjoyed you enjoy your care pack? Now, hold on, 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 hold I just saying, I, I thought I was the special one, but I guess not. Sparky's the man, the miss, and the legend in this one. Man, you know, you know, you know how Sparky go. He's the good Sparky. Yeah, like I'm saying, I was thanking you and Tony for everything. The way y'all treat me and all that kind of thing. Like I had some King Charles or something like that. But I'm saying, um, there's a little problem. You told me if I had a problem, report it to you. So I did have a problem. I went to Dunkin' Donuts to get... My Dunkin' Donut and my iced coffee. Uh huh. And they asked me where I get them vouchers from. I told them I got it from Naughty Johnny winning one contest on Guardian. And the people say they don't know nothing but that, so they call the general manager. <laughs> Naughty. Yeah, so, so. This thing, this Dunkin' Donut and this coffee was only $4.95. And they call the general manager to verify that. Well, I know, you know, I, so I, 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 I believe somebody blessed you with that. Hold on, hold on. Just remember now. So go get my 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 dinner and all that kind of thing. And I must say, Naughty, um, um, the service was not very nice. The food was not seasoned. Hey, Sparky, you was one of the most ungrateful bands I know you know. Not I ain't gonna let you, I ain't gonna let you, no, no, Sparky, I ain't gonna let you run out, because see, you're showing your PLP colors now, all right? Now, okay, now here's the deal. I, I don't, I don't, it. I don't mind, I don't mind if you want, if you want to throw them, them donut under the bus, because I don't run on them no more. But one thing I won't let you do is talk smart about Naughty Johnny's, and I just ate over there over the weekend, and the food stay off the chain. So I know where you're going. Now, if you little blind in your old age and you can't take salt and you can't take pepper or you had so much brown bottle that you drank out your taste buds, I can't help you, Sparky. But you got to leave my sponsor alone. You got to leave my good people alone. And that's when you talk about ungrateful Bahamian. Bang, right there. Uncouth, ungrateful Bahamian. But Sparky yeah, like to be got, heard got, so much. I got you get a free meal. You, My you God! Know, now when, when, when you say when, when you say you, you, you come from under the rock, now I see when you say you come from the valley, you come from under the valley, Sparky. Cause you ain't got no cool for the car, and boy. You don't do that on radio. He call, if he has a problem, he call you off air. That's what he's do. Blah blah blah. And blah, that's blah, the blah. same way when I wasn't awake, he called you running on. So not yeah. only does he lack. Cool's in decorum, he locked backbone too. But anyway, we could easily fix that, you know. Sparky, you're too ungrateful. You're too ungrateful. And you talk a little smack, and I ain't gonna let you talk smack, but people who, 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 who don't deserve it. So guess what? I ain't care what management say. I put you back on timeout. Take a timeout, Sparky, and I'll let you know when it's a call back with your ungrateful self. Well, if you're on time out with Naughty, you know what that means. You're on time out with... With Pearly, too. With your ungrateful self. You can't do that, man. No. You can't do it. And then when I say you get PLP versions, you can get mad, but that's how they carry on, too. Yeah. I ask you for something, you get to, and then they talk about, about you call you anything but a child of God. With yeah, all kind of that. lies, and then you end up behind it. Come on, man. Yeah. That ain't fair. That ain't fair. No. I ain't going to let you do that. And especially when I know the product is what the product is. And Sparky, my thing is, you don't much service. If you end up being your natural self, you know how abrasive and you could rub people the wrong way? You're lucky you ain't get escorted out. <laughs> like it breezes when you saw a kapunkle up at the comedy. Anyway, let me leave your file alone. Oh, Lord. Leave, leave, leave. No, no leave, but leave it's pretty. You know it's the right one, right? I'm the right yeah, one, yeah. baby. 
I, I see Sparky, you should have called me when I on there. I might have let you slide a little bit. You, you know what they've been saying in the comedy game about me for years, right? Naughty is the wrong fire to play with, Scarecrow. No, the, brother, the brother could respond easily, Naughty. You know, I mean, Sparky, you don't know. No, no, no. I learned my lesson. All right, let's let's get let's get to the other phone. Let's get to the phone line. Talking ads. Hi, you naughty. Hey, how what's happening? You? What's going on? Hi, you pearly. Hi, how you doing? I'm fine, darling. Yeah, you all got your soap opera out there. We can talk sports, please. <laughs> no, I'm, I ain't talking sports today, um, 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 naughty, because I'm still waiting to see what the Bahamas could do. I, I have faith in them. But, um, naughty, I wanted to say I had pulled some naughty Johnny, and it's delicious. I love it. Just, just wanted to let Spock, you know, the food is really good. Because you still get your taste buds in your head. You're, you, you still young enough to have taste buds. Sparky up there, you know, his national security number is single digits. So I don't expect his taste buds to be working. Yeah, that's, that's when the, 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 the taste of the food is supposed to fit properly on your tongue. But I think it's, well, we all know, that's Sparky. We and he could love him. That's all he could do. <laughs> <laughs> Love him and put him in timeout. Good stuff. I appreciate the endorsement, though. Good stuff as all of it. Pretty, but let's talk, man. Let's talk some sports, man. So, well, what's going on with uh, I, I, what do you call it again? Aiki? Aiki? From the 49 well, wide receiver. Let's, before we get into who's in and who's out, we, we got to do the. the you, you, you skip it. You skipping something. Mm -mm 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 -mm. I know it's probably painful. And I know it probably burns your sock dynasty, track and field dynasty to the core. But you know, we got to do the home court all brought to you, of course, by Burger King Nassau. And don't forget, tomorrow's Wednesday, all about Whopper Wednesday at your favorite Burger King Nassau. Get it by itself or get it as a combo. But the greatest burger ever made in the history of burgers, man, is the Whopper, flame broiled. Well, what my sock dynasty got to do with you about to talk about? No, I was just saying I thought he was a little bit disappointed. No, I... I... I on I know we were talking about it. I honestly think she came back too early. No, 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 no. I'm even talking about that. Oh, okay. I don't think Sean A came back too early. I think, barring injury, she would have bustled and people coming off the baby, and we was gonna brag and talk about it. Hamstrings are nothing to be pretty. How many times have you seen me fret in fantasy when when you say no, man, he could be, and I say, pearly, it's a hamstring. Yeah. Many, many times. And how many times have you seen a dude be out for six, seven, eight weeks of your season with a hamstring? Many, many times. Only to come back for a week or two and tear it all over again. It's one of the hardest yeah. injuries to heal in, in sports. And she just tweaked it or tore it here at the World Relays. Yeah. I mean, come on. You Sometimes. can't expect that to heal within four or five weeks. Not really. No, they take, they take forever. Take forever. She, I, I'm sorry she ran. She should have let it heal. You know, I would have feel no disappointment. But I know the opportunity. No, but I think that, I, I think, time, I think the opportunity was there. And she took it simply because she got fans and, and she wrapped the country, man. And yeah. considering soccer. all the fallout from Mr. Soccer. Gardner's race or lack thereof. No, I'm trying to figure out what's going on there. Now, I mean, we know what's going on with Shawnee. She was injured. And if anybody yeah. had a right to call in and say, look, I'm, I'm, I'm limp. I'm, I'm, I'm lame for this. I got to pull up. No problem. Yeah. But last I checked, there was no injury with Mr. Gardner. Everything was cool. Everything was copacetic. And then the next morning we wake up and we hear no show. Not in the Is blocks, he, not in the he stadium. He had a sore ankle. <laughs> But where did this sore ankle come from, Pearlie? When you see the race, when you see the race list, you get your ankle gets sore. But my question is, don't you have this new management team that handles all of that? Shouldn't there have been a statement immediately that you pulled out? Considering you're a world class athlete, considering there's other events coming up after the Olympics, or maybe. We got to but you better don't run no more for the year, at least for the next month. But what happened? Where did this ankle injury come from? Is my question. Well, we, we, you know, we can speculate, you know, maybe the, maybe, the, maybe the, the lineup was too tough. You know, I don't know. The lineup too tough, but I mean, you're the defending world champion. Yeah, well, you know. Haven't you seen these dragons before? Haven't you slayed these dragons before? I don't know. Now, you know, in the barbershop, a very popular sentiment has, has kind of evolved, Pearly. Do you uh -huh. think, and I'm asking the question, I'm, I'm putting the question out there. This is not my opinion, it's just my, my, me questioning something. Do you think with all 
rich athletes go through for their stipends, getting to and from meets, getting here into the country for things, back and forth. Do you think do you think that along with that gray cloud that went in over the track and field team specifically with, with decisions made by the BAAAs and the Bahamas Olympic Committee prior to this event, do you think that that was a whole just gray cloud hanging over this whole track and field team? You are such a conspiracy theorist. But you I'm know, asking a question, sad. Burley. <laughs> I, I don't I don't see I don't see that related. I don't see that related. I, I think if it was if it was a if it was something to do with that, I think it would have been a collective effort by all the members, not just one. Okay. One don't one don't make it effective. Because he's not hurting the B3As, he's not hurting the BOSE, he's not hurting anybody but himself by not But, if, if but I will effective. say it does reflect that there is a lack and there is a breakdown in communication between the athletes and, and, and our officials over there because it shouldn't have been six hours before you got a statement from Stevie's camp saying why he didn't run. Well, you know, it could be, you know, oh boy, I, I got to be politically correct here. Um, you know, some people are temperamental and maybe they was like, <laughs> I don't want to talk right now. I'm just, you know, just putting that out there. Pretty said temperamental. Oh, God. And you expect me not. <laughs> to, 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 exactly. Like, like this bat and practice. If I look in fastball and you throw fastball, it's a natural reflex, okay? I, it's I, muscle I, memory. You you throw up a setup, I'm coming with the punchline, man. Come on, bro. <laughs> That's like when you yank me to beat up Alice Bad the other day. Mr. Producer, but hey, Mr. Producer. Mr. Producer was all over the mute button just now. He was waiting for it, too, because he even he, he, he saw everything perk up. He saw, <laughs> <laughs> oh, who, who's the producer today? Big Chris is the producer today. Oh, okay, yeah. Chris is very Chris is very much on point. Yeah, man. Chris is on the yeah. man. Chris ready, he, mate. He's a rookie. He, he's a rookie. You don't break the rules. He stick to them. <laughs> That's why, you know, not if you got your boy in timeout. <laughs> it could be a long time. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't got to tell him. You ain't got to remind him. <laughs> he already know that program. Listen, he had me. He had me in check Thursday. He was on point. I got to say that. Yeah, man, you, you never know. sounded so good. I say, must be the producer. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, I mean, probably we we got to ask the questions of why is it that that it it look? I don't have a problem. If Stevie's injured, he's injured, you can't run. I get that. That's your career. That's your profession. I get it. Yeah. We all know Sean A was injured. But why is it there's still... Correct. Why is negative publicity still emanating from this? Why do we still have to always hear, like we here at home, our athletes are foreign, and we hear about some issue, especially in track and field. Remember the last international event? Some runners didn't run, and there was a coaching yeah. decision. I mean, why is there always drama? Yeah. Can't we yeah, all yeah. just get along? Can't we all just run? Swimming, swimming travels, and, and it's usually flawless, seamless. Basketball did fantastic. Uh, um, the um, baseball teams travel, but every time track and field, there's some drama, drama in in wherever. I won't say drama in Bahama, but it'll be in the Bahama. Drama, drama from Bahama. Bahama. Yeah, and it's ridiculous, and is and, and, and I'm you know, the president of BOC is a dear friend, former neighbor. The president of the B3As is a dear friend, so I don't want to say anything to throw them under the bus, but it's about time. The two of them, the two of them are right with me, but the two of them need to throw their things on this. And and the two of them are right with me. You know, what's going on? Somebody today, somebody today tell me the whole executive of the BOC should resign. resign. If if they are right with us, then they should be able to take the constructive criticism that we lay at their feet at at this time. It's nothing you know, personal. If, if it's you know, but see the bottom line is we don't we don't get it, for some reason there's lack of proper and I don't say lack of communication. So when you're sitting there trying to figure out what's going on, you're hearing all these rumors. And the worst thing is to let a rumor drop. You can't straighten behemoths out of there. If they come and tell me they see naughty there something out of the way, they're gonna be hard as hell to try to And that. guess so, what? Guess what? It could be 10, 10 miles away from the truth. Exactly. Look, it, most times it is. But nobody says anything. So by the time you get in and try to explain it, ah, yeah, yeah, they just have to take the time to figure out the story. And, and you know, it's sad. It's, it's not good for the sport. It's not good. Boy, I just hope, you know, it's all up and up. That actually what happens. And Stevie needs to come out and make a statement and say, listen, I was injured. 
this is what happened. I couldn't make it after the warm ups. I realized I couldn't make it. Why Listen didn't you here. tell your team? Why didn't you tell the association? Then explain that. And let's move on. I I, I looked though at, at the entourage over there though, Pearly, and I was right. I did have a couple of moments where I looked and I say, well, how in the hell you get over there? Boy, why are you there? Boy, you day. I mean, so, boy. Anyway, yeah, I, I just want to say Naughty Damas has done it again. I, yeah, I, I said, you know, you're not, you're not going to pull back some of your homies, cromies, lovers, and friends, but you can drop yeah. number three and replace with number five. That math don't math. And you could have just added yeah. them too and left some homies and cronies at home. Yeah, everybody, everybody. It looks like a lot of people from the ministry was there. From Oh, oh boy. Let's go yeah. to the phone lines. They're now living large and in charge. Right, go ahead, brother. No, no, I can leave that one. I thank you. Go to the phone line. Let's go to the phone line. I yeah, man, you, you, you frisky today. I, I, you see? Yeah. I, I yeah. Anyway, oh, I Mr. Producer say you need to be here too. And tomorrow's Thursday. Be prepared for tomorrow yes, to be so here. Tomorrow, tomorrow can be nice. We can be uh, nice All right, L- let's get to the phone lines. Talking heads. Hey, hey, good afternoon, Naughty. Hey, what's going on? Bro, this, this, uh, this the, Leo B. The Martin. great Leo B. What's happening, man? Hey, good, Leo? good, brother. Um, yeah, I hope you guys had a good holiday yesterday and everything. Um, I had a you know, fantastic uh, weekend. I just want to chime in while you're, you know, uh, talking about the uh, about the uh, the Olympic um, no show, and um, you know, Naughty, you know, we had we had a conversation before privately, and you you know my 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 true initial thoughts. So uh, I'm I'm more measured today. I don't have to bring that side out, but 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 you know, I I, I still today still feel uh, disappointed. I agree with you two thousand percent. And that I'm not, I'm not, um, I guess for lack of a better word, castrating Stephen Gardner. But you know, and like someone said in our group, uh, yeah, you know, Stephen Gardner has built up, uh, you know, uh, a reservoir of goodwill as it were. You know, winning, winning the gold, you know, he's the reigning gold, uh, gold medalist, et cetera, et cetera, and, and won these races for us to put the Bahamas back on the map in relevancy, et cetera, et cetera. I get that. At the same time. You know, there's a there's a right and wrong way in doing things, and um, you know, you're on a track warming up and doing all these things. You know, there's the national media of seeing you probably did a little small in the interview or whatnot, and you know, for you to just walk off the track with your event coming up, if you had an injury prior, um, like Pearly said, man, you 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 know, and you said also you have a management agency that's speaking on your behalf. Let them issue an advisory. You know, take take a cue out of what uh, Shelly Ann Fraser Price did. And even Sharika Jackson, <clears throat> when she pulled up the 100 meters for Jamaica, ahead of time, you know, knowing her body, hey, I'm not 100 uh, percent ahead of time. I'm not, I'm not able to run to run this race. Let me concentrate on the 200, which we knew later on. Again, she had to pull out, but she gave advance notice. You understand what I'm saying? It wasn't no craziness, you know. It was no surprise, and you know, you don't, you don't go disappearing. For hours on end. Jamaica looked like they knew what was going on, Leo. Let's cut to the chase. They knew it was going on. I get I get it. They were doing the association and well organized together. It's just a right and wrong because you're a professional. You're a professional, number one. And, you know, this is not the Diamond League. This is not some uh, individual event where Stephen Gardner's name is on a jersey. You have the behemoth flag on your jersey, which means that uh, there's, there's, there's a way... And the protocol and doing things, and so he should have informed members of the public. The chef, the mission was at the time. Hey, listen, this is the situation. Even if he, he's not up to talking to the media, you give them a statement and you let them speak on your behalf, so that you won't be going on. Because you know you have people like Marcellus Hall and Kelly Longley on the ground who want to relay the information there. They're on the ground and they the BRIs and they ask for us, for the athletes. And so it's like you know you got to communicate. So I I gave him wrong for the way he did it. And then the next day, man, you know, it, it, it just, it just, it just left a, a, a bitter taste in my mouth. And I'm just speaking, I think, on behalf of a lot of Bahamians, who was because we expected Stephen Gardner to really have a chance to medal, not so much to get a gold, but I mean, do something for the Bahamas. And so for you to just do that like that, you know, that's that's where I'm coming from. Okay. Now the next thing I want to address, Naughty, is um, you know, uh, Pauline Davis Thompson wrote a letter, right? And it was it was it was circulating the media because uh, afterward, um, uh, I think Shawnee's father responded to that, and TV wanted to see that hey, what she had to write in that was not for 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 Shawnee Miller, and 
first of all, when you read her, her, her letter, her statement, she did not explicitly call out the names of any athletes. She didn't call Sean A's name. She didn't call Stephen Gardner. No. Speaking of, uh, to the conduct of what Stephen Gardner did, you don't just abandon your, your squad mates. And, and to be honest, I think it, it, it demoralized the Bahamas even further and left a low morale. When you have your champion, um, you know, where we can get a medal and boost, boost us up, walking off the track and he ain't communicating, he ain't saying that to nobody. That 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 kind of that kind of low blow you, and um, you know, congrats to athletes who participated. But so far, Team Bahamas ultimately uh, has not um, come up with a medal. Now, thankfully, um, you have two young men are just writing their names down. I think um, Wanya McCoy in the 200 meters, he's running tomorrow morning on uh, the semis. I wish him all the best and hopefully qualify for the final, putting himself in the position at least the medal. That's A. And then B. Um, uh, I think um, Antoine Andrews with the 110 hurdles. So it's good to see the young men doing some stuff. Um, you know, I'm sorry for what happened yeah, to Sean Miller with that with with injury. And, and that brings me to my point where um, where her father released this this voice note, right? I think in the voice note, not say I think, I heard myself because like, I listened to it three times. He he said that she was she, she picked up an injury during nationals. So my thing is, as a father and as, and as a coach, if you notice your daughter is injured, why would you accept an, uh, uh, an Olympic invitation from the Bahamas? But I'm sure they will run. I think that, you know, you should allow her to do the, the heel because obviously on the heels of her. Um, well, her well Leo, one, one sec, one sec. Oh, well, two hold things. On. Two I, things. I got I to comment on that if I can. Go ahead. Go. The Olympic team leaving. Sheldon was on the show with me and we spoke about Shauna having an injury. And we thought that she would not have to make the team, but there was anticipation that it was enough time, five weeks or six weeks time, that she would have had the ability to heal. It wasn't considered a very bad injury. Like, she wouldn't have been ready. I have to say kudos for her as the defending two-time Olympic champion, as the Bahamas' great hope, as to giving it a shot. I don't have a problem with that. I'll give it a shot. All right. I, I, I have to commend her for that. Let me, let me, let me, let me interject my two cents here. I wish you were too. You darn skippy, she needs to go on our dime. She's a defending two-time Olympic champion, world champion, got an opportunity to defend, got an opportunity to repeat, got an opportunity to bring us all kind of good publicity like she's done previously when she's won. You, 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 you take that. I mean, why not? We got homies, cromies, lovers, and friends going. We got three getting bumped off for five. If not, why not? Why not for a world champion? Why not for a defending Olympic champion? And Leo, so you know, we still got Devin Charlton running in the in the hurdles as well, and she's a good uh, chance for a medal Thomas as well too. Jump. Of course, and of we course, still got Donald right. Thomas and, and, and in the high like jump, say, and the I'm other not, two young ladies running with Devin. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I, I, I am not disparaging um, Shawnee by any chance. You know, Naughty, you know this because we had okay. a conversation before. So I only reiterate. No, 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 I'm not, I'm not going to do. I'm just saying in general, I'm a defend that. I rather a defending champion go to defend, and and fight through injury to to to, to succeed. The heart of a champion, then then the then hook then the hookup network. For the record, I applaud her, her hard because I'm a former athlete, and so as an athlete, you know, That's you want to you want to be able to put yourself in a position to at least at least have, have have an opportunity, you know. And so she showed hard, and the thing is, um, she she had a DNF on her initial attempt, right? Uh, I'll take a DNF over a DNF because the mere fact that she was able to show up. She had yes. the opportunity, even though she didn't finish the, the run in the rep I, I, I know I'm, uh, I'm pronouncing it wrong and butchering it. Yeah, I'm making it to, to rerun the race and set herself up where she could have possibly win that and put herself back in, in the contention. Okay, so yeah. kudos to her, right? But I'm just saying, uh, um, Naughty, the big, the bigger thing with Team Bahamas, right? If if our coaches knows that our athletes are not 100 percent, our premier athletes. I don't think that, and I hear what I hear what Pearly saying with five weeks and stuff. But when you have certain injuries, especially if it's a hamstring, I don't know to the extent of injury you may know and share after I come off Pearly. But I'm saying if you know that your athlete is, is, is suffering from a current injury or whatever, then uh-huh. you need to kind of put put a time on that and allow some other person to step up because who knows. You have some young person. No, but if, if she couldn't run, no one else would have been able to run. But we got, Leo, we got to get. We got to get to the break, man. Nobody else would have been able to run in her place. So her not running, her running did not affect any other Bahamian running because she ran. She was there because she qualified based on her world timing. Yo, so it wasn't like if you take her out and put, put the substitute there, that wouldn't have happened. 
All right, we got to get to the break. Good, good stuff, Leo. Good stuff, Pearly. We got to get to the uh, break. And uh, on the flip side of the break, Pearly, we got some picks to get into. We got a few more things to talk about. Then we get into our picks, and we got a great final 15 today. Speak up, crew taking us home today. What was your take of the NFL's top 100? Boy, a lot of people a little upset over that. Some people, uh, you know, omitted off the list. Some people not lower than they should have been. A lot of talk about that, man, coming uh, it's off a, the beginning. It's, it's an opinion. That's the problem. It's done like that as an opinion. So you can have that discussion all over. They Remember when they did the top 100 basketball players? Yeah. And you know what I say about opinion polls and opinions? They just like belly buttons. Everybody got one and nobody but leaves. They stink. Yeah, belly buttons that could stink. Really, that really did, that didn't come up. Well, I, right. It was another orifice I was trying to get at. But anyway, let's go to the break. When everybody out, fried chicken we are free, bucket for the crow, share a bucket together, everybody go live, crispy original when we're online, bucket together and do the new dance craze. Hot AFC summer bucket deal, eight pieces of your favorite fried chicken and four buttery biscuits with options to add family fries, a two liter switcher and four pineapple biscuits starting at $20. KFC, it's finger licking good. Living with a neurological condition shouldn't define you. At Cleveland Clinic in Florida, we do whatever it takes to make life better today while discovering new treatments for a brighter tomorrow from epilepsy management to specialized spine care and brain tumor surgery we're delivering world-class neurology care for the day today for the days you live for for every care in the world visit clevelandclinicflorida.org slash caribbean we're gonna give you a check every week for a year Island game, keep you winning, Percy Plenty Plan. Dream big, we will help you live it, Percy Plenty Plan. Island game, we got you, Percy Plenty Plan. From the friends you can trust, it's winning is a must. Go play the game you know, cause your best chance is with us. The most trustworthy name is Percy's Island Game. So put 20 on your account and ride this easy train at Percy's Island Game. John Shoes and Accessories is your one-stop shop for all your footwear needs. You will find what you're looking for among the growing collection of classic and trendy styles with new arrivals every week. John's covers all for service. Your experience shopping with us will be time well spent. Shop with us online at www.johnshoes.com. John's also now carries small home appliances. So come on into John's located on Rosetta Street in Palmdale and Carmichael Road West. John's, we put fashion at your feet. You're listening to Talking Heads with Naughty. Only on Guardian Radio, 96.9 FM. Oh, we're back at you on the Tuesday, August 6th edition of Talking Heads. Your boy, Naughty and your company, right up until 6 p.m. Purdy in the building as well. And uh, Purdy, we got a couple of things to talk about before we get out of here. Um, okay. We got the picks lined up, but um, obviously we got to do baseball today. You know, and yep. lots of baseball. Big, 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 big My big God. Big Plenty of baseball to pick from. But I, I will tell you, though, um, uh-huh. your squad looking good, my squad looking good. They need to handle their business and, and end up where they need to be, man. I hope so. Because, I mean, you know, Jazz looking good in New York, bro. No, that's a good spot for him. It's a really good spot for him. I and, mean, and yeah, they, they, open up, New York is good. they open up a three-game series against the Angels that won uh, seven out of eight. Um, so yeah, I, I'm thinking that'll be 10 out of 11. It, they'd be looking good. But we trying to close that gap. Tied with Baltimore. Go ahead. Is it, we trying to close that gap between us and the Phillies, you know? Yeah, that's 66 and 46. You all are 66 um, and 47. Yankees are yeah. 67 and 46 right now. So we do have the better record. Just thought I'd share that with you. Let's, you have the better record where? In yeah. the whole of baseball? No, no. Out of the Yankees and the Dodgers, we have a better record by a game. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I just thought I'd share that with you. Let's go to the phone lines real quick before we get to the picks. Talking heads. But, but you know, wait, wait, wait. Before you go saying that and getting people to believe things ain't righteous, that's because y'all played one more game than us. Oh, God. Just let's go to the call. Right. Talking heads. Hey, Naughty. Hey, what's going on, Skiller? Make it quick, cause we gotta get to the yeah, to the to the break. Quickly, where is it? Naughty, I just want to find out something, right? Uh huh. Season and start, right? 
preseason done so in the NFL? Yeah. It starts tomorrow. this week, tomorrow. Or Officially tomorrow. And then they have every year. And then Thursday you got a couple of games and then on the weekend. Yeah, I know well, I know we be playing Friday, I know that. Correct. Yeah. 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 Friday and Saturday. Okay then. Thanks. All right, my brother. All right, good stuff, man. Be safe. Good to hear from you, Skiller. All right, Pearly, let's let's have a gander real quick. Uh Naughty, tell uh Purdy, I'm pulling hard for Kershaw tonight against the Phillies. Thanks, Jeff. Naughty Sparky is a typical valley and a PRP to Harmony. Oh, God. Oh, God. Y'all stop. Lee Sparky. Y'all Lee stop. Lee Sparky. That's our boy. Lee Sparky. All right. Here we go. Real quick tonight, man. You got uh, the Diamondbacks and the Guardians. I like the Guardians at home. I, me too. Reds and the Marlins. Boy, I got to go with the Reds in I this like one. The Reds. Yeah, the pa- Marlins ain't got much. They, they get shot out last night. Oh, no. They, they played the score a couple of rounds, but they got the pants beat off them. Padres and Pirates. I like the Padres. I like the Pirates. Giants and the Nationals in, in, in Washington. I like I like the Giants on the road. Yeah, yeah, unfortunately. Orioles and the Blue Jays. The Blue Jays can't beat nobody lately. I got to go with the Orioles. Yeah, for real. Brewers and the Braves. I got to roll with the Brewers over the Braves in this one. I, I like the Braves at home tonight. Rays and the Cardinals. Mm, I like the Cardinals at home. I like the, yeah. Rangers and the Astros. Rangers at home. Boy, they they, they tempted me no. as a home underdog, but I got to go with Houston. No. Yeah, I rather I, I like the Astros. Not rather. I like the Astros. Twins on the road against the Cubs. We got to go with the Twins. They're I, a better team. I like the Cubs at home. All right. Royals got their big I'm dog. Under, I'm anger pitching. That's why. The Japanese pitcher. That's why. Royals got their big dog going tonight. So I, I'm going to go with the Royals at home over the Red Sox. Yeah, Lugos going tonight. Yeah. yeah, Seth is going tonight. That's a better team. Mets playing good ball. White Sox and the A's. The White Sox have lost 23 in a row. I got to go with the A's. Well, they got two, lo- I wouldn't say, two very uh, high ERA pitchers tonight. I can go with the A's at home. Two home run machines. Two, 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 two run machines. Yes. Two run barrels. All right. You got the Tigers on the road against the Mariners. I like the Mariners at home in this one. I, I like the Mariners as a whole team. I like them to, to win that division or be in the playoffs. Yeah. Who pitching for the Dodgers tonight? Kershaw. We got to go with Clayton over the Phillies tonight in L.A. I got to go with Kershaw, man. Yeah, they got Sanchez pitching. It should, be, it should be a good game. If Kershaw could get that curveball over the night, ooh, he'll be lights out. All right. That's uh, your picks all brought you, of course, by the Island Game. And don't forget, it's all about the big survival pool with the Island Game NFL fans. If you like to pick, join the Island Game's survival pool. 35000 up for grabs, Pearly. 35000 cash up for grabs. And some other fantabulous prizes. $20. If you haven't signed up for the Island Game already, you need to sign up. I'll tell you how to do that tomorrow and, and, and Friday. And Purdy will get you that information as well. $20. You can only pick one team one time for the season. But who's the last person standing wins 35000 And then you can enter as many times as you want. The deadline is September 8th. Quick break. Let me start practicing my Spanish. Okay. Yeah. Flip side of the break, you got... Uh, Speak Up Crew taking us home with the with the NFL Top 100. The good, the bad, and the ugly about that. Enjoy the ride home. We'll see you tomorrow right here on Talking Heads. We're going to give you a check every week for a year. Percy Fenton Plan. Island Game. Keep you winning. Percy Fenton Plan. Dream big. We will help you live it. Percy Cancer Treatment Centers of America is now City of Hope, creating one of the leading cancer care and research networks from coast to coast, providing more of what you need. More locations means more care closer to home. More specialists means more expertise. More research means more breakthroughs. More advancements means more treatment options. And more options means more hope. Learn more at CancerCenter.com. The Guardian Media Group has your ticket to Paris. On your marks, get set, go! Join the Guardian Media Group, Star 106 Hits, Guardian Radio 96.9, and Hot 91 FM. And follow Team Bahamas from Paradise to Paris. 
Live comprehensive updates on Team Bahamas every day during the 2024 Summer Olympics. We are your ticket to Paris. Nassau Guardian Sports Editor Sheldon Longley will be trackside, bringing you closest to our athletes in their quest for gold. From paradise to Paris, the 2024 Summer Olympics. Live updates brought to you by gold sponsors, the Bahamas Ministry of Tourism, Jimmy Wines and Spirits, distributors of Refreshing Sands Beer, Silver Sponsor, Executive Motors, and the Bronze Sponsors, Hertz Renner, Bay Street Garage, Nassau Motors, your Chevy and Honda dealers, and New Life Natural. Let the games begin. Uh, Stephen Gardner, alongside 100 meter hurdler, Devin Charlton. When everybody out yeah. Fried chicken we are free Bucket for the crow Share a bucket together Everybody go live Ooh. Crispy original when we're online Bucket together and do the new dance craze Hot AFC Summer Bucket Deal Eight pieces of your favorite fried chicken And four buttery biscuits With options to add family fries A two liter switcher And four pineapple biscuits Starting at $20 KFC, it's finger licking good Join us in helping to support The Bahamas Children's Emergency Hostel when doing your shopping at Janae's Uniform Center, just drop your coins or more in the special donation box. You can also help by donating vitamins, snacks, medicines, butts, and more. Visit the Bahamas Children's Emergency Hostel directly, or you can donate online at bceh242.org, or call 361-4124 or 807-6155. And thank you for helping us. The Bahamas Children's Emergency Hostel. Together, we can make a difference. You're listening to Talking Heads with Naughty, 96.9 FM. They all have gold jackets for a reason. For a reason. Yeah, they're going to wear the gold jacket today, so it's like an ode to them. I got a chance to see Devin Hessner up close and personal playing against the Bears year after year. And same thing with Peppers. I mean... Played with him, played against him, just absolutely special. You know uh, pass protection, right? I don't know what yours was called in Philly, but we had 300 jet. We had scat yeah, yeah. too, all that. That's quick, 300 When quick. we played the scat. Bears, we called it pep jet. Slide <laughs> the protection <laughs> to wherever Julius Peppers is at. If you're on the right, we slide over there. If you're on the left, we slide over there. We called it pep jet. He was just that type of player, man, correct the game. I seen him in practice, just wreck practices. You go over there, you done got your two plays, you, you messing Aaron up. <laughs> you know, he let us get some practice done. He was just special. That's but all these dudes, dude. man, Thanks. well deserved. I uh, I feel bad, honestly, for people who didn't get to watch Devin Hester. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Especially now with all the rule changes. Like, you cannot understand mm. the, the trauma yeah. <laughs> that he inflicted <laughs> on teams. Like, why would you kick to him? Yeah. And it's crazy you say that because playing against him so much, and I remember, like, our kickoff teams and punt return teams would be like, kick it to him, we got him. Mm. Like, offense, get ready. It's all good. <laughs> get ready. Get it's ready. about get to ready. be our turn. Getting no rest. Man, he was yeah. different. He was different. Um, and then shout out to the, uh, to the Canes on the list as well. I love that. Devin Hester, Andre Johnson. Mm. Um, congrats Man. to the guys. The Hall of Fame is special. Hall of Fame's obviously my brother is in it. So, <laughs> you know, shout, out. shout out to Jason, first ballot. No big deal. Um, but I think that it's a Hall of Fame that takes getting into it very seriously. Not that the other ones don't, but we do have conversations about it, <laughs> about some people that should be in the Hall of Fame. So uh, it's, a really, it's a really special weekend, special to be a part of. Um, you know, maybe maybe we'll get an invite one day, Shady. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Hopefully it works out. You know, it's going to work yeah. out. Yeah. 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 Just make sure we understand what's going to It'll work out. <laughs> Speaking of, we are here with the Eagles' all-time leading rusher, Shady McCoy. TV personality, Shady McCoy. Sorry, that's how we're going to say that. Uh, <laughs> Super Bowl champ James Jones. And NFL analyst Bucky Brooks is joining Bucky. us today, which we love. Thank you, Bucky, for being here. Thanks. We appreciate it. Now, let's get to it. From the stars in the past to the present, the NFL Top 100 list revealed their top 10. And Tyreek Hill is number one. He was followed by the reigning MVP, Lamar Jackson, the Offensive Player of the Year, Christian McCaffrey, and the man who needs an introduction, Patrick Mahomes. But he came in fourth place. So that is the top 10 list for the players, top players of 2024. Shady, is it crazy that Patrick Mahomes is a number one? No, it's not crazy. I don't think it's crazy at all. Every year, Patrick Mahomes can be number one because he's that good. If you had to ask me who was the best player in this league, Patrick Mahomes. We, know, we all know that. But this list is more of, okay, what happened last year, right? I think the Chiefs picked everything up in the playoffs. You know, I think the defense kind of led the way. 
and Patrick Mahomes put the teams a way, right? So look at that guy like Tyreek Hill. He almost had 2,000 yards as a receiver. Yeah. That did almost happen, right? And and I was saying this earlier is that, you know, last like it should have been a situation where Tyreek Hill should have been uh, up there for the MVP, right? We make it such a quarterback award and not take anything from Lamar Jackson because he earned that award. He won it. But I just think that other guys like a Miles Garrett, like a guy like um, Tyreek Hill should have had a chance to win that award. So it's not crazy at all. I mean, you look at this, the, the guys in front of him. You had Lamar Jackson, who won an MVP, right? We all would say that Patrick is a better quarterback, better right. player than Lamar. But Lamar, that year, was MVP. So if he was number one, I wouldn't have been tripping about that either. Okay, and then Chris McCaffrey, office player of the year. He had a phenomenal year. He balled out as a running back, right? He should have had a chance to win MVP too. So all them guys in front of him, and then Tyreek Hill, I told you before how special he is. But I'd love to see a guy like Trent Williams. Mm -hmm. Listen, man, uh, I know linemen don't get a lot of credit. I had a chance to play with a guy named Jason Peters, who's the best player I've ever played with, aside from quarterbacks. And Jason was so good. I don't care if it's DeMarcus Ware. I don't care who it was. It was a matchup, right? Shady, hey, don't chip my guy. I got him. And we talked about how you just said slide the protection to, to uh, Peppers. Peters. Or, or, or Peppers. Peppers. I'm sorry, Peppers. Yeah. A guy like Peters, he didn't need all that, right? I, I got him. So a guy like Trent Williams, he's that good. He can pull. He can pass block. Whatever you need, he can do. So I would have him up there probably in the top five, but... I like the list. It's cool. Look, I'm, I don't understand why everyone has been so outraged that Pat Mahomes was not number one. I understand he's been a two-time MVP, won a bunch of Super Bowls and those things, but it's not a lifetime achievement award. It's supposed to be based on what you did last That's season. right. If you look at last season, second lowest number of touchdown passes he had. He had a 92 passer rating, which isn't great, and for the majority of the year, the offense struggled. Struggle. So I understand why I went elsewhere. You could say Tyreek Hill. You could say CMC. Both of those guys had fantastic years. It didn't necessarily need to be a quarterback because I don't know if any of the quarterbacks necessarily lit it up last year. Mm, that's true. Yeah. R-E-S-P-E-C-T. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Aaron Rodgers is on this list strictly because respect. That, that's why Aaron Rodgers is on this list. Aaron Rodgers played four plays. He's on this list because the respect of his peers or the respect for the other people, whoever's voting for the last 80. Because, Shady, I don't know about you, but when we voted for the top 100... It was 20 things on there, 20 slots on there to vote for the players. It was not 100. So these other 80, somebody else got to be putting this thing in there voting for these players. There's no way that you sit here and you say Patrick Mahomes is the fourth best player in football. There's no way. And I don't care if this is how it shook up with the votings and all that from the players. Y'all seen what the dude did in the postseason. You see him go out there and win another Super Bowl. There's no way we can sit here right now and say Patrick Mahomes is the fourth best player in football. It just sounds crazy that we're going to name three dudes before we even name Patrick Mahomes' names. No disrespect to none of those dudes. Reek had a phenomenal year. Lamar had a phenomenal year. Christian McCaffrey had a phenomenal year. But the best player in football is Patrick Mahomes. It's either one or it's either two when you do this list, but there's no way you no, put three people in front of Are you saying that's some, that's some hateration going on? I'm saying it's some hateration, and if it's not any hateration, whoever is doing the rest of the voting and putting this stuff together, when you seen the run that Patty went on, you you had to say, hold on, I know he had four, he ain't four. But they, but they, but they voted before the playoffs. That's what they say. So so they voted around like week eleven or something like that. Yeah, and I mean that's that's it's why just I, hard to say that though because of a... four plays though. That's that's why I'm like I Aaron can't... Rodgers. Yeah. yeah, that was respect. I mean Aaron. Rodgers, so that's play. what I'm saying. So what I'm saying is though for for all the other. I mean it's 94. We talking about the top 10. Let's let's get serious here. I'm not talking about after 50. I don't even. I, I made the list. I wasn't at 30. I stopped counting. Right. So we talking about the top 30 players. Let's use that for example. So I'm saying with, with Tyreek Hill, like I'm not mad that he's number one because he had a, that number one type of year. Patrick Mahomes is the best player in football. No matter that, how you cut that, it, we know that. That's all. But, I'm saying. If we go on year to year base, it's like, yo, his, this year, if you ask Pat, how you feel about your year? Now, they won a championship, so he's like, yo, great year. But as far as the individual stats, he'll tell you, like, this wasn't my best year. Yeah. So if you're looking at week 11, week 12, the, the Chiefs' offense was struggling, struggling. Yeah, struggling. I was struggling, saying, I was right? Because you was a guy saying, yo, they're not going to the, the I championship, right? Yeah. Now, I wasn't, but you was, yeah. but that don't matter who's right or wrong. <laughs> what I'm saying, when the guys are voting, that's when they weren't looking as good. Yeah. And then the playoffs came, he turned it on. So, I mean, I don't, that's why I don't mind. It's just crazy to me and respect factor because I know these dudes, struggling or not, when you play Patty, you know exactly. They know. What they Patty, know. That's all I'm saying. So to say so, to one, me. two, three, and then Patrick, it just sounds crazy here, to me. I understand stats-wise what they did, but it sounds crazy. Based on the voting system, though, it makes sense. Now, now overall, I think this is a... You got the voting is, system right there? This is, speaking frankly, a nonsense list. You, you have the players vote in November, December. You give them a list of 20 so that they're not ranking the top 100 anyway. 
It's the only way to get everybody to participate because yeah. it's during the season. So you're not counting for the postseason. It's really like, how are you doing up until this part? And then they don't release it until after the season's over. So it looks insane. But based off of when they voted, the people that did vote and take it seriously, it makes sense. Lamar was the MVP this year. Christian McCaffrey was Offensive Player of the Year. And at this point in the season, Tyree Kill was on pace to do something that had never been done before. Yeah. So, so it doesn't mean that Patrick Mahomes isn't the best player, but it means at this point in the season, this is what it was looking like. And if you look at the criteria from that perspective, then it makes sense. Now, why we're releasing it in the offseason other than giving us content, wink, which we appreciate, it doesn't really make any sense. Like, this is not, this is a list that should either be the best season or at the end of the season, evaluating everyone's, but how do you get the players to participate? Like, that's the problem. So the validity of the list is all of the, your, your peers voted on it. Yeah, but they voted in the middle of the season right. before the postseason happened. Yeah. At this point, Trevor Lawrence is, is, is looking okay. We know how that season ended. At this point, the, the Chiefs have an extremely struggling... Like a little, little uh, I'm, I'm just right. saying, like, there, there's a lot that happened during the course of the season. Like, C.J. Stroud wasn't Rookie of the, uh, of the Year at this point. Like, there's a lot that still had to happen. So I just have a hard time freaking out about it because if I look at when they like, voted, this is, makes sense. Did you guys vote at the Pro Bowl one time or no? No? I mean, which Pro Bowl? James? <laughs> I'm just saying because that's that's at the end of the season. I feel like we're doing a lot of gymnastics though to protect number 15's feelings. It's okay if you're not number one all the time. You don't have to be number one all the time. He didn't have his best year. Look, at one point, Pat Mahomes had 50 touchdowns and won an MVP. He had 27 touchdown passes last year. Like, based on his standard, he didn't play to his standard. So how can we say, oh man, we did him wrong. He should be number one. He didn't play like the best player in football the entire season, so he shouldn't be rewarded. 